If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. Welcome back to episode 6 of the Color Theory series. In this episode, we're going to start talking about customizing the color wheel palette to something that is going to be more suitable for using in real life, in real painting, and customizing it to suit your need. Customization is going to be in two parts. In this one, we are going to talk about selecting different colors for the 12 basic colors. And then in the next episode, we are going to talk about how to start adding other additional colors in to this palette in a way that means you can still apply all the same principles that we've covered in the previous videos with the additional colors included in it. When I first adopted this color wheel palette for my own practice, I had a few issues with it. The color wheel palette is absolutely fantastic learning tool. It teaches you so much about color theory and color mixes but it might not be exactly the kind of colors you use in real life in your own painting. And if that's the case, we can totally customize it. However, if you do decide to customize this color wheel palette by changing out the colors or adding new colors, I highly recommend you do it in a different palette and keep this palette safe for now, as we're gonna be coming back to this palette for the latter half of this series, where we're gonna cover color schemes and color combinations in paintings. When you decide that you don't like one of the colors or you're finding that you're not using a certain color at all because it's just not the color you use in your painting, you can totally swap it out for another color. The only thing you have to remember and make sure to do is say you don't like this color then whatever color you choose to replace this with must neutralize the color that's opposite. It's complementary color because that's the whole point of the color wheel palette is that every color can be neutralized by its complementary color. And that is super, super useful in color mixing. So you don't want to leave this empty or choose a color that doesn't neutralize its complement because then it's going to throw your palette off kilter. But as long as you follow that quick tip, it's very, very easy and very adaptable to whatever palette you want to create. This palette is mostly transparent colors, but maybe you like opaque colors or maybe you want to create a palette that is heavily granulating or not granulating at all. That can all be done very easily. And I'm gonna show you how in this video. One of the issues was that I just didn't like having yellow orange in my palette. I don't use yellow orange straight from any colors. If I need a yellow orange, I much more enjoy creating it by mixing yellow and red. It's not a color that I would use in a painting on its own either. Over a few weeks, I found that I just wasn't touching this at all. And I really don't like inefficiencies in my palette. It's just a pet hate that I have. If I see a color that I'm not using at all, I really start focusing on it and I don't like it. So I wanted to change. Another problem I was having was that I was finding I'm not using the phthalo green at all either. It's another color that I just don't use. The other issue with the phthalo green was I didn't like the gray neutralization color that it produced with the quinacridon rose of my choice. It was a little bit too inky for me and not quite neutralized enough. And you guys know that quinacridon rose by Daniel Smith is my absolute favorite color. So I wasn't going to change this. And that meant looking at the alternatives for the phthalo green. When you are not happy with the colors in the color wheel palette, you are more than welcome to adapt and change it to suit your need. The way to do it is to do some color mixing test. And this is what I did. I grabbed a scrap piece of paper and I grabbed all the greens round about this area and I mixed it with the quinacridone rose and checked to see what kind of color mixes they provided. 
I personally really liked the neutral colour that was produced by mixing the Hooker's Green with the Queen Rose. So I went with this, but you might like a different one. To save you some time, I will scan this sheet in and the other sheets that I'm going to show you in this video and put it up on my Patreon so that you can check it out there and maybe save you the hassle of trying mixing your own colours or be a good starting point for you guys to find your own perfect grey for yourself. So I did that and I was like, okay, in which case I'm going to swap out my Thalo Green for my Hooker's Green. The other issue I was having around the same kind of colour area was the Yellow Green. I personally really like to have as transparent a colour as possible in my palette. Sometimes it's not possible and I have to concede with a little bit less transparent colour. But I was really struggling with the yellow green not being dead transparent. Also with the yellow green I was tend to find that it doesn't quite neutralise. It mutes the colour but not quite neutralise it to a perfect grey. So what I did do with that one was grab the colour I wanted to be able to neutralise, which was the colour that was in the F position, in this case a Queen Violet by Holbein for me. And I grabbed all the yellow greens and round about that kind of colour and did the colour mixing again. And I found that, oops, I didn't label that, that is Hooker's Green again. I found that from all the neutralised colours, I really liked the Hooker's Green version again. And that meant that I can use the same colour, the Hooker's Green, for the bracket E and bracket F position, which makes my palette even more efficient, which was great news for me. So that's what I decided to do. In terms of the yellow-orange, I did a colour mixing for that as well and I tried all the yellow greens as well as the browns because the classic colour mixing thing for making a neutral grey is a ultramarine blue with I think burnt umber correct me I'm sorry if I'm wrong and so I grabbed a few of those I actually did more sheets this I recreated so that you guys can see the kind of colour mixing that I did for myself and I found that the trans red oxide gave me the kind of grey I personally like the most. But most of the greys also give really nice grey. So if you don't like that, that's totally fine. Pick the one that you like the most. It's most important that you create a palette with colours that you really like that mixes in a way that you like the most. So overall, I went from this 12 colour colour wheel palette to something more like this. I replaced the yellow orange with the trans red oxide and I replaced the thalo green and the may green with the hooker's green. So if you do notice that you're not using some of these colors, it's totally possible to find an alternative that you're gonna want to use more. All you have to do is look at the color that you don't want Find the opposite colour, the complementary colour, and try to find a colour that neutralises this. And that's all you have to do. You can adapt this palette to whatever you want. Maybe you don't like these kind of colours. You can totally replace it. Have a play with all the colours you have and see what kind of palette you can have. And just for proof, this is my studio palette. And as you can see, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, a bracket, B bracket, C bracket, D bracket, and E and F bracket. In the B bracket, I have trans red oxide. And for E and F, I have hooker's green. And just by labeling all this on the palette, especially the hooker's green, it still allows me to apply all those things that we covered in color mixing in the earlier episodes of this video. In the next video, I am going to show you how you can start adding all these other colors that you are dying to have in your palette without all the really useful functions that the color wheel palette provides for you. And by just making sure that the 
color wheel palette still exists in the same form on your palette, it's going to ensure that you can actually neutralize any color that is on your palette. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So that was a quick video on how you can start customizing the color wheel palette to suit your need much better. I hope this video was useful and interesting to you. If it was, please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.